My name is Nick Jamison. I am uh, originally from Columbia, Missouri. I believe I lived there all of uh, six months before I moved. Uh, my family moved all around Europe, Greece, England, places like that. Um, I say places like that because I can't really remember that far back. Uh, and uh, then I ended up after a lot of moving around in Philadelphia, which is where I spent my teen years. And because of that, I kind of I claim that as my hometown. I'm claiming Philly, yo. Uh, you know, uh, so and that's where really I would say my musical interest started was in Philly. I guess the reason I'm so eclectic, and it can be a double-edged sword, <laughs> you know, in the business, both in music and in acting, because people know what to do with you more if you're just one thing. But I grew up with all kinds of music around me. My dad was a big jazz fan. Uh, both my parents were big classical music fans, and I just kind of one of the. Uh, the first things my re my mother remembers me doing is sitting in the kitchen banging on pots and pans saying, I'm playing Stabinsky, Stabinsky, and <laughs> I'm banging, you know. I guess I'd heard the right of spring at some tender age and gotten corrupted by it. Uh, but yeah, I listened to all kinds of music as I was growing up. And um, I think like a lot of us, it was kind of escape from the humdrum life. Uh, folk music, I think, was the first music I really started playing. Then uh, rock and roll. Uh, then um, branching out into there, I guess I got into jazz in the late 60s uh, when I started listening to John Coltrane. Uh, I, I first started listening to Coltrane by turning the balance control all, all the way over to the left so I could just focus on Elvin Jones. Because I was playing drums a lot at that time too, and Elvin Jones was a revelation to me, all his polyrhythms and stuff. And that was a big influence on everything I've done. Well, I had a rock and roll band in Philly, and we played pretty straight head rock. And I moved to Woodstock. Uh, and at that time, all kinds of, I guess you would call it roots music performers were there. Guys like Jeff Moldar, uh, Paul Butterfield, Maria Moldar, Eric Von Schmidt, Chris Smithers, Bonnie Raitt, all these folks were coming in. Muddy Waters came up there to record. Uh, just a lot of, you know, sort of rootsy kind of music. And, and some sort of experimental stuff, like Howard Johnson, the tuba player, was there. Uh, or not, uh, not, uh, was it Archie Shep was there. I'm going to get this wrong, uh, and somebody's going to complain, but I don't know if, we, was it Archie Shep? I don't know. But there were some events, uh, Dave Holland lived there. I can't say he's influenced my bass playing because I would never have those kind of chops. But <laughs> So as far as to answer your question as to how I got to be kind of eclectic, I just, I've always had a taste for all kinds of music. I really have. And um, as I moved on and sort of become more of an artist, like I said, that kind of confuses people sometimes, but I've had my fun. <laughs> when I joined Foghat, and since this is Bass Frontiers magazine, I'm gonna <laughs> we're talking about bass, I had only dabbled in bass. Um, the guys needed a bass player, and at the time I was kind of getting into jazz and all this Woodstock experimentally stuff that I was telling about. I thought, well, look, um, I'll join, I'll play for a year, you know, I'll join, we'll go out on the road, uh, we're scheduled to make another record, and um, I, sure I can play bass, guys. <laughs> so I ran off and got myself a Fender Precision bass for a disgustingly low price, I think it was pre-CBS, whoever's got it now, I want it back, um, and I practiced my butt off, and at the time, it's going to sound really weird, but I was kind of getting into this fusion rock stuff, which... I'm not that crazy about now, but I thought I'm going to try to learn all of Stanley Clark's licks. <laughs> so I'm listening to Stanley Clark. I'm listening to the guy from Tower of Power. I don't remember his name, but, but a wonderful bass player. And I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm going to, because I played bass before, uh, but with a pick. If I was in a situation where I was on a record, like, okay, I'm going to play some bass, I'd play with a pick, because I'm a guitar player, I started out. You know, and I had a feel for the bass, I had a love for the bass, I understood what a bass is supposed to do, so I'm not like, mm, you know. But when I joined Foghat, I, those guys are very particular about their music. <laughs> it's got to be right. Um, and when I first started talking to them, Rod Price would talk about the bass player for, help me out, Roger, was it a Humble Pie, or... Steve, yeah, about what was his Steve name? Mac, Greg John uh, McVie. Yeah, the guys um, who would just play so you could barely see their fingers moving, 
And I thought, well, that's no good. When I'm playing, I'm like, <laughs> if I'm going to make these guys happy, I better learn to play with my fingers and really learn to do it right. So I spent a lot of time um, learning how to play that way. And um, so when I got in the band, I didn't think, oh, okay, I'm doing something different. It's like, I hope what I'm doing is going to work. <laughs> So, because I was into all this other stuff, I would, you know, it would just sort of show up, you know. I mean, if I'd have come into Foghat and started trying to play, you know, Stanley Clark licks or, you know, Jack O' licks, it would have sounded pretty stupid. <laughs> but uh, that's a long and rambling answer to your question. But I really, I was just thinking about I want to sound good with the band, I want to sound right with the band. And um, as always, when you're playing, you know, you get into a flow and whatever's in there just starts to come out. You know, so that's what came out. <laughs> mm -hmm. 